In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the procedure for enabling timestamp recognition from a video. I'm going to use a folder from a previous tutorial, this one, and we can see that it has a timestamp, but this video has not yet been configured for that timestamp to be read by optical character recognition during the analysis. The first step is to use this drop down box to choose the VTI that's in use here. Looks like it's this one. It's an I IOTA VTI 3. It's a one line, and the F shows that it's a Model 3 VTI. If I click that, it automatically shifts to field view and it positions a set of selection boxes that are generic. They may or may not fit well with your particular equipment chain. I zoom in so that I can see the characters in their selection box. If I right click, and do a show properties, it shows where the character is in the box. And I can see that this box probably should be shifted a little bit over to the right. So I would enable jogging. An arrow key will move it one step to the right. I'll disable jogging and show properties again. So that is a better centered character. Move to the next. Mm, that needs to be moved a little as well. Enable jogging. Box comes over one. Show properties. Looks good. Disable jogging. That procedure is repeated for every box. Let me Scroll the screen, let's take a look. This one looks a little off. Yeah, it's actually not bad. This one, that one's a little off, so I will enable the jogging. Slide the box a little bit, one step to the left. And that's better, disable jogging. Similar for this, enable jogging. Disable. That one needs a little movement. That's better. Finally, after all the boxes have been positioned to your satisfaction, we need to select the model characters that are going to be used for uh, the optical character recognition. If you right click, that's a zero and I'm going to record it as a zero. That becomes a sample. I recommend that you first show the properties to make sure it's a good sample. If it is, that's a good sample of a six. At five is a little off. I think I will fix that while I'm here. That's better. And now I think that's a good five. Seven. Nine, I need an eight. I need a four. I don't see, what do I need? I need one, two, three, and four are missing. Here's a three, so I can record a three. I step to a new frame. There's my two. Um, 
I need a one and a four. Here's a one. Step a frame. There's a four. At this point, I would make one last click and I would click on show model digits and there we see a display of the digits that are going to be used to match during the timestamp extraction. So we are now ready. Let's just jump one frame and we will see in fact that we are now, if you look down here, you'll see that we are extracting timestamps. There's some additional information. These are scores, character by character. They should be in the high 90s, except, of course, here where we had these empty boxes. Now, for this folder, let's just look to see what has happened inside our folder. I'll open up the folder. All of these are new are new files that record the position and the model digits for our optical character recognition. Finally, we probably want to save this. So if I click on this button, we will have an opportunity to save this. So I would just give this profile a name and let's just call it uh, test one just to show the process that would add that video to this list. The way this would be used is if I had another video from the same equipment chain, instead of going through this positioning and picking model digits, I would instead go to this list, pick the one I wanted, do load selected profile, and I'd be done. And that's it. That concludes this video.